Hello, welcome back again. Uh, I uh, we stopped at the previous uh, session uh, on on a sentence. I said, I said it is the word of God that that uh, gives vision and direction for success. Now, it, whatever religion you may belong to, you must have heard the story of Solomon. Solomon is a is a is an icon. Uh, or, or the name, the name is very well known all through the world and, you know, in so many of the world's major religions. Um, so I'd like to show you something here or remind you of something here in the book of uh, uh, Proverbs chapter four. Uh, Solomon happened to be the son of David, all right? And David, it, when you're talking about kings that have ruled this world, ruled their nations in this world, David was one of the major ones. David in Israel is known, in the Christian uh, faith is known, in Islam is known. David was a very successful leader, all right? A, a, a very wealthy man as well. Now, he gave birth to his father. He was the father of, uh, of, of, of Solomon, all right? Now, this was what he instructed his son Solomon here in Proverbs chapter four. So when, when successful people, I'm not talking about when financially rich people, I'm not saying we should ignore the ideas, but I'm not talking about the worldly system of people that uh, just pursue material wealth for their evil indulgence. That's not what I'm, I'm referring to as successful people. I'm talking about people who have succeeded in the sight of God and man, okay? So this is God's kind of success is the success that we, we should follow, all right? Now, this was what he said in the book of um, uh, Proverbs here. If you come with me, Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4, listen here. I'm going to read it. This is a very sweet, I'm going to skip some verses, but I will read as let's go together. We're just having fun, okay? Let's see where the Holy Spirit takes us. Here, you children, the instruction, instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding, for I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Look at what he says, verse 2. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let your heart, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. Mm. So there's life in keeping commandments. I'm not talking about just the 10 commandments. Also the commandment that Jesus summed up in, in the gospels, when he said the greatest of the commandment is to love God with all your heart. Uh, with all your might, with all your strength, with all your mind, with everything that you have. And then he says, and your neighbor as yourself. He said, that is the greatest commandment. So if you want to live, this is what he says. He taught me, say, keep my commandments and live. Okay? Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither incline or decline from the words of my mouth. All right? Look at what he says in the next verse. Forsake her not. That is the law of God, right? And she shall preserve thee or the law of someone who is godly. Because the person who is godly is going to give you instructions that are in line with the, the, the mind of God. All right? It says, forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. In all thy getting, get understanding. I want to show you something here. All right. This, what the scripture does to someone. What the word of God does to someone. This is what the Bible says here. Uh, come with me to the book of Psalms. All right. Where it says, uh, let's let's look at it. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. I'm going to read it from verse 97 to 104. Look at what he says. I'm reading from the NLT. The New Living Translation says something here. 
Ah, okay. L maybe I read it from King James. I was trying to pull it up in the New Living Translation, but it's not coming. So let me see if I will, if if it succeeds. If I succeed, okay, it's not opening at this time. So I'm going to read it from Psalm. Come with me to the Book of Psalm 119, please. All right, Psalm 119 is what is the longest chapter in the Bible. I'm, I'm sure you already know. And let us. Don't worry, I'm not going to take you all through the uh, through the entire chapter. It's just a few verses there. Psalm 119. Let's look at it from verse 97. Okay. Psalm 119, verse 97. What does it say here? Oh, how I love thy law. This is David, the father of Solomon, who made the previous statement in the book of Proverbs. This is David speaking here. He said, oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all day. Thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than mine enemies. Hallelujah. This is amazing. So the word of God helps you, enables you to beat your enemy. Because through wisdom. He does it through wisdom. Because wisdom is superior to strength. All right. He said, thou through thy commandment has made me wiser than my enemies for they are ever with me. All right. I have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation. Can you see? So the word of God makes you wiser, makes you wiser than your instructors. For David, it made him wiser than his instructors. Look at it. I have, I understand more than the ancient. So understanding and wisdom doesn't come by age. David said more than the ancient because I keep thy commandments. I have, refra I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I, may, I might keep thy law. <laughs> When you get close to the word of God and really close with your heart, you, you automatically, you are drawn far away from sin. But when the word of God is weak in you, it's not as strong and fresh daily in you, you are itching closer and closer to sin. So the two can't, can't you can't pull one end to the other and merge them in yourself. You are lukewarm. So one will take you away from the other. Like the book of Galatians says, it says that those that are led by the spirit live a life that is contrary to the desires of the flesh. And those that live by the flesh live a life that is contrary to the desires of the, of the spirit. For the two are always pulling in opposite directions. They pull you in opposite direction. The spirit of God is saying, no, do this. Or your human spirit is saying, no, do this because this is what the word of God says, but the, the flesh is saying, no, do this because this is what gives you pleasure. It makes you happy, you know, and these days, the times we live in today, everybody feels I can do anything with my own body. They don't know that the body was purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. So that is why the scripture say, glorify God in your body, which is God's. Amen. So the price has been paid for you. So whatever you're doing with your body right now, you know, the, whatever you decide to do in the flesh, you are, you're going to give an account. All right. The day of reckoning is coming. So we must be careful. So let's go further. All right. Let's go further. I have verse 101, 101. I have refrained from thy, my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy law. I have not departed from thy judgment, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Ah, this is beautiful. Hallelujah. So you can see, you can graduate from the best school, read, have more degrees than a, a thermometer does. If you do not know the word of God, 
you might not have wisdom. Human education is, is good. Uh, you know, God has given some of us privileges to, uh, you know, a lot of privileges, and we, we've used some, we've gone some, but you no, know, wisdom, the human education is supposed to enable us to make sense of the world around us after we have discovered and are being educated by the Spirit of God through the Word of God. I say we are being educated because it's supposed to be a continuous thing. Just like the physical education, you read every day, you study every day, you keep uh, yourself afresh, keep yourself you know, in line with, you know what is going on around you, even when it comes to God. Because remember what I said in, 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 before, you are designed to be in this earth, on this earth, what God is to the entire universe. He is the governor, the owner, the CEO of the entire universe. The heavens and the earth belong to him. Listen, he rules all things. When he created the world and put you and I here, he expects us to do here what is being done in heaven. Remember the prayer that Jesus prayed? He said, Father, let it be permitted to be done on earth. By who? By us, not angels. Not angels. Let it be done on earth as it is done in heaven. That is why Jesus said in the book of Matthew, he said, whatever you permit on earth shall be permitted in heaven. Whatever you disallow on earth uh, shall be disallowed in heaven. In other words, our position here that God has placed us is a position that God himself recognizes and honors because it's, if he doesn't, he will be breaking his own law. So he see here that uh, the scripture says that through thy precepts, this is David speaking, I get understanding. No wonder he was a very successful leader. Everywhere he went, he dominated. He ruled. He had lots of favor. He also made a lot of errors, but he repented. That means you and I, when we make errors, we must learn and repent immediately. Learn from David. He repented and God forgave him. In the book of 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, he says, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just, verse 8 says, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He said, if you say you have no sin, you are lying and you deceive yourself and we will we, we'll be deceiving ourselves because the truth is not in us. That's what he said. But if we confess our sins, confess means to own up, to say, Lord, yes, I did the wrong and I, I need your forgiveness. And you receive that forgiveness right then. And then you forgive yourself because God has forgiven you too. Don't worry about whether other people forgive you or not. People are... Uh, they hold on to things. They, they hate, they hate, they are not eager to forgive others, but they hate it when others fail to forgive them. So don't worry about that. This is not about, it's not so much about what people think of you as, as it is of what God thinks about you and what you think about yourself. All right. So we can see the essence of God's word. It gives understanding, it gives wisdom. It brings about knowledge, okay? The lasting knowledge, the world conquering knowledge, all right? The word of God. It gives the superior wisdom to people who pay attention to the law of God. I mean, it would be uh, stupid for someone who designed, I mean, you go to anything, somebody who built a machine, and the person says, he wrote and put a manual together for you to, to enable you to operate the machine. And you say, well, I don't need the manual. Many of us men do that, right? You buy a TV and then you get up and you try to fix it. And because we, the patience to read through the manual page by page is, you know, some, many of us lack that patience. And, but we always refer back to the manual when our, I thought I knew what to do. When that fails, then we come back to the manual. I think it's wiser to start with the manual so that you save your time. And the word of God is the manual. If you're not a Christian yet, you can read the word of God and you will meet God in his word. And you will experience salvation in his word. But if you're a Christian, you don't have an option. 
This is, if you want to succeed, lasting success, this is it. All right? So wisdom, God's wisdom, brings uh, God's word gives us wisdom. The source of true wisdom is God's word. Now, let's go back to Proverbs here. Proverbs chapter 4. And I'd like you to skip to verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ears unto my saying. Don't let them depart from your eyes, from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those who find them and health to all their flesh. The finding brings health. It brings life. The finding, the discoveries in God's word brings life. They bring health. Woo. There are so many testimonies, things I've been through that I want to share. I remember <clears throat> many years ago, I was reading Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, where he says he himself took, he said he took, my, he said, the chastisement of my peace was upon him, and by his stripes I am healed. All right? And by his stripes I am healed. I read it. And then I, at that time I had a disease, a bone disease. When I looked at the truth of God's word in the book of Isaiah, in fact, I want to read it for you. Let me not just glide over it. It's a very powerful scripture to me. I have benefited from it. So Isaiah chapter 53 is where we're going. So if you want to come with me, Isaiah chapter 53 is where we are going. Let's go together. Isaiah 53. What does it say? <clears throat> Verse 4. And five, surely he had borne our griefs. The Hebrew word referred to as griefs includes illnesses, sicknesses, diseases. And we did as it were, no, sorry, I'm reading it again, verse four and five. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. What he's saying is it was our griefs, our sicknesses, our sorrows that he carried, but we thought that God was punishing him, Jesus Christ, because of his own doing. We didn't know that he was doing, he carried, it was, it was for our sakes that he was placed on the cross. The people of that time did not know. You and I read the Bible today, the New Testament, so we can see the fulfillment of the Old Testament things that were covered or, or that we're not that that the New Testament is the fulfillment of. So you can see here. Now, oh my goodness, it said the chastisement of our peace. The punishment is called chastisement of our peace was upon him. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. I'm personalizing it. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. That was what I read. And when I read it and I say, God, you mean we are healed? If I have been healed. In fact, the translation I read is the old, 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 old King James. And he says, he said, by his stripes, ye were healed. All right. That's what I read. And then he said, I, then I questioned the, the physical reality, not the real reality. The real reality was I was healed, but the physical situation was different from what the truth of God's word said. I was healed when Jesus was on the cross, but I did know it. The information was hidden here in the scriptures, but I did not know it. And for so many of us, we are going through situations and banging our heads left and right, not knowing that the information that leads to freedom is right here in scriptures. So when I read that, and then I said to the Lord, Lord, if I've been healed, I, sorry, I asked myself, I said, if I, have been, if I have been healed, what is this doing here? So I, see, I was able to see that the truth, the reality from God's perspective uh, was different from the reality on my in my physical body. So since the reality in my physical body was inconsistent with the reality of God, what did I do? 
I had to make a declaration. I don't know what came over me. Nobody taught me to do that. I just said from this moment that I've seen this, this will be the last time I go for surgery. If you ask any of my siblings, they will tell you, you know, I was the burden to everyone, you know, in the family because of that affliction, a huge burden to my mom and dad, all right, to the whole family. My father spent so much money on, you know, trying to get me well. No, I, but because I wasn't saved and because I wasn't saved, there was no interest in the word of God. But even when I got saved, it took me several, a, a, a while to stumble into this. I was reading it. I, on that day, I was, I think, fasting. It was a fasting day for me. And I was praying. And then I said, I just opened the scripture. Let me just read. Let me feed my spirit. And it, that was when I discovered this statement. Maybe I've read it many times before, but there was no revelation. My eyes didn't catch it. My, my spiritual eyes never caught it. So there was no revelation to me. Can you see so many of us read the Bible and then we don't, we don't, we, we, we read it and we, we just move on. And when you move on, you, you, it's good that you have read at least, but you got to dwell on it and go back and go back and go back. And as you go back, what you're saying to the spirit of God through your action of going back to the same word of God and reading and reading and reading, you are saying, spirit of God, I'm hungry. I want to be taught. I'm, I'm pursuing. Remember the book of Matthew says, he that seeks will find. So what you're doing is you are seeking. And the, when the Holy Spirit sees that you are serious and determined, what he does is he opens up the cover of those living word. And then those living, the written word, he, he becomes, it comes alive in your spirit. And it brings a revolution to you. And that was what happened to me. Let me read this for you here. He said, for there are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. That is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22. They are alive to those who find them. Are you looking? Are you looking hard enough? Where are you looking to? What are you looking for? Is it a better marriage? Is it a discovery of your vision, your, the purpose of God for your life? Is it health? Is it wealth? Is it joy? Is it peace? Whatever you are looking for, it's all here is all here. The written word is the same as the living word. People say, oh, the Bible has gone through so much translation. It is no longer accurate. The lie, that's a lie of the devil. I can tell you, I love you in Japanese. I can tell you, I love you in Chinese. I can tell you, I love you in Vietnamese. I can tell you, I love you in Swahili. I can tell you, I love you in, in Deutsch. And in, in Dutch, I can, uh, what do you call it, uh, a, a German, and, and, and Dutch, I can tell you I love you in, in, in uh, uh, you know, uh, whatever language. It, it does, it may not sound the same, it, 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 you know, it may, not, it, may not, it may not sound the same, but the meaning is the same. The spirit is the same. If I say I love you in Japanese, I say I love you in, in, in Chinese, my, if my action is inconsistent with my words, then you can see, see there's a contradiction. But whether you read it in the new, uh, in whatever language that is translated to, the spirit of the word is still the same. The spirit of the word has not changed. Amen. The spirit of the word hasn't changed. And if the spirit of the word hasn't changed, then that means that spirit of the word is going to do the same thing that it is designed to do, is sent to do. So you cannot quit studying the word of God. The word of God leads you to life. It is leading us into life, not just a, a long life here on earth, but the eternal life of God, the life of God. It leads you into it. J Jesus said, He that uh, asks shall receive, he that seeks shall find, and he that knocks it shall be opened, uh, or to him shall be opened. When you go to God's word and you are searching with the pen, with the paper, and you are reading, and you are discussing with friends, you got to find someone always to bounce the word of God around, discuss it, and get, you know, just keep chewing it together, discussing it. That is what I, I do with, 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 with my 
with my with people that are close to me. You know, I, what do you think about this scripture? I call Pastor Martin very often. I call my brother Ajiki very often. And I said, hey, and so many other people, I said, you know, I say, call them. What do you think? Oh, sometimes, I, oh, many times I've called my wife. Oh, do you know what I just found out? And I discuss it. Because as I'm discussing, as I'm saying it out to them, I'm hearing myself say it. And by hearing me say the word of God or narrate the word of God or recite the word of God or read the word of God, what happens is it's producing faith in me. Amen. So you can see here that he says it is life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. It is life to those who find them. Are you looking for life? Are you looking to live? What are you looking for? I, whatever you're looking for, the key is here in the word of God. The word of God is consistent with the, the written word of God is consistent with the living word of God. And the living word of God is Jesus Christ. For the, the spirit of God is the author. He, the Bible says, holy men of God were inspired of the, by the spirit of God to write. And you can, you've heard stories. Archaeologists will put, pull this from here and pull that from there and pull this from here and pull that. And, but when they bring them together, they match. They, they match. There are also some translations today that have been the devil has infiltrated and has removed some words from them and has added some things. You know, like the Jehovah's Witness uh, uh, translation is not a Bible. If you are into it, uh, I need you to, uh, I like to recommend that you reconsider and look for the word of God. There are so many translations in the word of God that are removed. For instance, there, there is the, the, the mark in the book of Genesis, uh, in the translation, King James Version, the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse, where, verse 26, where Jesus said, and if, if, you, uh, if you have ought against anyone, forgive, so that your heavenly Father too will forgive you. It's not in some translations. So when you don't don't just get any just don't get the just the uh, a single a single version of scripture, amen of the Bible. Get various versions, compare them, toss the ones that are not complete. The King James version is good. I have not seen a lot that is uh, anything missing except for the the difference in English grammar when you are comparing it with Greek and Hebrew, but language. Is the same thing I was saying. If you say I love you in 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 Chinese or Japanese or 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 or, or Spanish, it all means the same thing, even if it sounds different. All right. So the language should not be an issue. Amen. I want to encourage you. If you want to get wisdom, look into God's word. Amen. If you want to get direction, look into God's word. If you're looking to live, look into God's word. If you're looking for a long life. Look into God's word. If you are looking, you see, the, if you're looking for health and deliverance, healing, healing includes deliverance, healing of finances, physical health, healing of marriages, healing of whatever it is, it is, the, is God's word. If you, if you want to be free from addiction to anything, is God's word. If you want to end nightmares, is God's word. If you want to develop faith that will overcome the devil and to always win, to walk in victory, it's the word of God. So I want to encourage you to uh, get God's word. Buy a Bible. Get a notepad and study. Amen? Let's study together. And please reach out to me. Call me. Share your thoughts with me. I love to discuss this. Do you understand that when we all study the word of God, what happens is we live a more peaceful life. Your life becomes peaceful. You are more at rest. All right. Jesus said so. He said, come to me and you will find rest for your souls. When you read the word of God, it brings you peace. It brings you rest. All right. When you are doing people that have a, a, a emotional uh, problems, I, I always recommend have you read the word of God before? Have you read the Bible before? And when they, when they read the Bible, they, many of them, oh, wow, this is, is, it, gives, it gives me so much peace. 
I say, yeah, that is why many of them used to say, oh, you always look very peaceful. Nothing seems to stress you or bother you. It's because I always read the word of God. I study it. I do my best to apply it. Yeah, when I make mistakes, I get up and I go back again and I want to fix it and I want to do it the right way because we are growing and people that are growing oh, are prone to mistakes. So I want to encourage you to do the same thing. Amen. I want to encourage you to do the same thing. When we come back again, we're going to look at how the word of God will enable us to produce an all-time overcoming faith. Praise God. All right. Praise the Lord. This is amazing.